I'm going to present like a really whirlwind brief sort of overview of my artwork um, from the early 90s and it, it's a lot of images so I'm sorry it's just going to I'm kind of going to whiz through it. Um, I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I was born in Hong Kong but uh, my family sort of did multiple migrating and ended up in Australia. Um, I wanted to show the development of my work, also the diversity of media and exhibiting in different types of spaces. Um, and an important aspect of my work has always been exploring issues relating to cultural identity and referring to family, history, text, language, um, migration, a sense of belonging, um, looking at hybrid identity, um, including mixed uh, blood race issues and sort of a, a kind of hybrid space that um, I feel that sometimes people have to negotiate uh, when they might feel in between cultures, uh, countries and locations. Um, so this work is basically my work from the early 90s showing um, a period of sort of experimentation using craft fabric um, materials and soft fabrics and looking at crossovers between uh, Chinese um, imagery and Celtic imagery, which is a reflection of my background. Um, my mother's Chinese from Malaysia and my father is Welsh. Um, I started looking at um, Chinese symbols and uh, both characters and animals, and this is like a combination of Chinese uh, symbols and Celtic lettering. Um, this works from 1994 and was called Shoes for Bound Feet with Unbound Feet, um, and it's uh, a direct reference to the practice of foot binding, and um, which my great grandmother um, had her feet bound as a child and then unbound in the 1930s when the practice was outlawed. So I was sort of thinking about the, um, the way the feet, um, you know, had been um, manipulated and deformed and then what would happen when they were unbound, they were already, um, you know, broken and deformed. Um, this is from an early exhibition um, at an artist-run space in Melbourne, Australia, um, and it shows a variety of, of um, work, uh, different media, this work is called 20 Words and sort of relates to my interest in um, looking at Chinese text and calligraphy and it, it re references my um, kind of coming to look at Chinese text from a drawing perspective because I um, didn't grow up speaking or writing Chinese and it, it looks at the fact that my grandfather was sort of the last family member to to write and he um, also was a, a very um, good calligrapher and um, Chinese painter um, as well as being a dentist and um, some of his works um, have influenced my work. Um, the character you see is also means dragon which is part of his name and in 1995 this is sort of a continuation of that work um, I spent some time in China and um, it, again it's looking at um, Chinese text and this is, I wanted the viewer to walk into the gallery and be like be surrounded by like you're in, walking into a giant book and it, it was based on the textbooks that I was looking at to learn Chinese that had Chinese um, characters in the printed form and English and but it had this sort of odd um, inclusion of kind of slightly Western punctuation as well. And this was called The Foolish Old Man Removes the Mountains, which is an old um, Chinese fable. And continuing on from that, I started doing wall drawings. Um, also, this is all made from chenille sticks, which are also called pipe cleaners. Basically, now they're a kid's um, craft material. Um, and I've, they, they have, you know, the fluffy um, sort of... Uh, fluffiness is around um, wire so you can manipulate them and I, I bent them into and twisted them and trimmed them to replicate uh, the ink um, sort of brush strokes of Chinese characters. This shows like my grandfather's um, scroll painting and I've reproduced the 
poem in chenille sticks and they're directly pinned on the wall. And this is called What People? And um, I guess this um, is more directly about issues um, to do with xenophobia and uh, I guess um, all the characters that I created, one was an alien and there was a male, a female and a, a younger female character and they all had the characters for what sort of um, emblazoned on their heads and it was kind of like a, a de kind of defiant, you know, looking back at the viewer and to that question that people, you know, quite often would ask, like, where are you from, which sometimes can feel like, um, you know, what are you? Um, this is called What Girl, What Did You Say? And I guess this is kind of the start of, you know, this ob obvious um, comic book influence, kind of warrior girl figure, um, kind of, yeah, punching out. Um, this is uh, a sort of installation of stencil spray paint. I started using spray paint around 97 um, and uh, sort of a mixture of symbols. This work... Um, is a combination of ink and spray paint on paper and shows the sort of warrior figure girl and um, the writing says, I am Australian. So it's sort of um, kind of about cultural identity in Australia. This work is based on um, the birth of my son in 1999 and was also ink and um, spray paint on paper. These were soft weapons that I made, that I hand sewed out of fabric. Um, this work's called Liji Warrior Girl, and I made an animated video in the year 2000. This is one of the stills um, from the video, and it's sort of inspired by a fourth century Chinese story um, about a, a girl who um, saves her whole village by slaying a giant python that's been ritually eating young women. Um, that's another still from the video, which I kind of co like combining traditional and contemporary imagery. So in the video, the ancient warrior girl um, is transformed into a contemporary uh, Melbourne uh, girl and has these flashbacks to a past life. And that's the installation of the the images and I had the video running. That's my son there, actually, when he was smaller. Um, and then in the around year 2001, I sort of had a return to painting after avoiding it for many years. Um, and this was called um, Guardian Dog. And I was interested in um, imagery of, like, for protection and luck. Um, uh, this was called Welcome and sort of directly referenced um, the issues of immigration and also refugees and asylum seekers in Australia. And it sort of, yeah, it got the defiant kind of um, strong female figure in the centre. These works um, also continue with um, the guardian dog that's, and then it's a reworking of a traditional Chinese print um, with the image of my son and the fish. And I've been very interested in symbols for luck and um, to give positive vibes and energy and I feel like, you know, in this mixed up world that we need more. Sorry, that um, image is actually a sort of reworking of a um, traditional Chinese god, um, but using the sort of uh, like a portrait of my husband. This work, um, well, actually, this shows Amsterdam. I had a um, large video installation in the year 2002 um, called um, From the Lives of Li Ji, and I sort of um, transformed the figure from the fourth century story into different lives and multiple um, time frames. This is another work um, called A Hundred Forms of Happiness, uh, looking at Taoist imagery. Um, I recreated the characters and they all represent happiness um, in different ways, you know, different symbols. It's the same work reinstalled. Um, that's the video blown up and shown on the Liverpool um, 
uh, Holiday Inn. And these are w more uh, works from 2002. Um, you see the female figure sort of in different um, appearances. And I've been quite interested in, in kind of playing with uh, hybrid, looking at hybrid identity. And um, this is also the video projected. Um, this is also from around 2004. I had a three-month residency in Harlem um, here in New York for three, uh, yeah, three months um, and created quite a large body of work after that. I was really inspired by the, um, different, the mix of cultures. Um, and this was called Hybrid Faces Project because I wanted to kind of use this template but mix up hairstyles and skin colours um, and uh, different um, fashions, I guess. And I liked the fact that um, the figures are kind of, you know, you can't quite pin, you know, where they may, might be from. They could be a mix of of any number of different cultures. And I guess that relates to personal experience with people kind of not knowing where I might be from being a mix. And quite often people don't think that I'm Asian. They might, uh, when I was living in Harlem, most people, you know, would speak to me in Spanish or, you know, or like think I'm Latin American. And I like, I like that, that, you know, you can't, it's sort of, you know, um, you can't be defined and this um, is called Ancestral Dream. And I guess that is lo looking at, you know, that your family might have so many different sort of lines of, of people from different places. And quite often we don't even know where it is from. That's the uh, video. Um, and this was a, a, large, a show in New Zealand in Christchurch where I combined wall painting and draw um, the stencils with images. This is the most sort of recent work that I guess relates to the work in this show as well. Um, and this is called Peacekeeping Forces. And the f images on her back are based, uh, like female versions of the traditional Chinese guardian figures. And I wanted, you know, to transform them to be female uh, warrior figures. And this is called Auspicious Nine um, because nine is considered a lucky number in, in Chinese culture and it relates to uh, my own um, birth date. And, um, and I wanted to just sort of have this set stage sort of set with all these um, symbols and animals for uh, luck and good energy. So there's... Bats are considered a symbol of happiness in Chinese imagery. Um, and the dog, again, there's a tiger. And um, there's various talismans for protecting the body and um, for basically, yeah, for good fortune. So, and that's um, basically, yeah, lead this work that I have in the show here, I made especially for global feminisms. I wanted to make new work. Um, and there are nine sort of portraits of different female figures um, mixing up traditional and contemporary forms and styles and, um, and um, yeah, I made it especially for global feminisms. Thank you.